everyone and thank you for joining me on this, the second Sunday of Lent. Our time together is being recorded in uh, St Martin's Church in North Leverton, part of the Church in the Levertons, which is a local ecumenical partnership with a single sharing agreement where Methodists and Anglicans have worked together as one community for many years. Our opening prayer. Thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity of worship, for the freedom to be amongst your family, meeting together in the spirit of praise and worship and in the warmth of your embrace. Thank you that in worship we can put aside the uncertainties of this world and rest upon the certainties of the kingdom. Thank you that we can bring to your feet all the hurts and fears that trouble us and leave them there knowing that your strength and assurance are all that we require. Thank you that as we draw near in worship, we're transported from a world of concerns and fears to a place where we can be at peace in your presence, find healing, wholeness and refreshment. Thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity of worship. Our collect for the second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's suffering and by following in his way, come to share in his glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's sing or listen to our first hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me? Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my love be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare, should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Let the blinded see if I but call your name. Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Love the you you hide if I but call your name. Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. before God those things we may have thought or said or done that mar his image in us. And so we pray. Creator God, forgive our moments of ingratitude, the spiritual blindness that prevents us from appreciating the wonder that is this world, the endless cycle of nature, of life and death and rebirth. Forgive us for taking without giving, reaping without sowing. Open our eyes to see, our lips to praise, our hands to share. May our feet touch lightly on the path we tread, and our footsteps be worthy of following, for they lead to you. The assurance of God's pardon. May the God of love and power Forgive us and free us from our sins. 
heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We now listen to our reading from the Gospel of St Mark, read to us by Sue Walker. The reading is taken from Mark chapter 8, verses 31 to the end. Jesus talks about his suffering and death. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him, along with his disciples, and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Let's pause for a moment to contemplate what that reading might be saying to us today. But first of all, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would lead us from where we are in our understanding to where you would have us be. Amen. Mark's Gospel, the shortest of all the Gospels and possibly the first one that was written. It's a little bit structured like a mountain because we go up one side and we hear the ministry of Jesus, the miracles, the healings, the feeding of thousands, the calling of the disciples. And at the very top of the mountain, at the pinnacle, Peter's declaration, you are the Christ. That's the first time that it's actually stated exactly who Jesus is. And then, starting today, we come down the other side of the mountain on our journey to Jerusalem and the cross. Before Peter's declaration, you are the Christ, there must have been a good deal of speculation about who Jesus actually was, not just amongst the disciples, but amongst the ordinary folk as well. All of the, his activities, separately and together with his disciples, had to have attracted the attention of many people. Certainly, we know that the authorities took notice, just who was this man Jesus? Of course, finding out exactly who Jesus was brought the disciples more than they had ever bargained for. When Jesus told them that he was to be rejected, abused and even murdered, Peter, perhaps fearing for his own life, rebukes him. In his humanness, he couldn't imagine such a thing happening to the Messiah. Perhaps in his own mind, he had conjured up the great and powerful things that Jesus would do when his messiahship took hold. He might have had visions of himself standing beside Jesus, one of the messiah's trusted assistants, sharing the glory. Surely suffering wasn't part of Peter's dream for Jesus, or probably for himself, or any of the other disciples for that matter. Think for a moment. Jesus' disciples had actually been hand-picked by him. They'd spent time with him and they were his friends. Think how shocking that revelation must have been to them. 
And so Jesus had to continue his teaching to his disciples and others, revealing to them the true nature of his mission on earth, and by extension, what their mission was as well. Just as Jesus, in his healing ministry, gradually opened the eyes of the blind man at Bethsaida, so he gradually reveals to his disciples and others the nature and implications of his messiahship. He would lead and they would follow. This was not to be a partnership of equals. They must be prepared to deny themselves, to abandon any thoughts of self-centeredness. They must be prepared to take up their crosses, to perhaps even face martyrdom. In those days, it was common practice under the Romans for criminals of the state to literally carry the crossbeam of their own cross to their place of execution. For followers of Jesus, this was the possible penalty for spreading abroad the good news of the kingdom of God, for trusting him and obeying his will, accepting loss and injury in the cause of Christ and his gospel, and all the while denying the natural human desire to preserve and enrich their own life in this world. What a horrendous thought to contemplate. And their ultimate goal, to follow Christ's example, to become more like him. We know from our own faith journeys that these changes don't come about as easily or as quickly as we would like. The account in Mark's Gospel reveals that even the disciples in their humanity had difficulty following Jesus to the cross. Some fell asleep when Jesus went to pray. Peter openly denied Jesus after his arrest. And some of the others went into hiding until after the resurrection and they had the opportunity to see him and be with him again. But ultimately, they were changed. They went out and preached everywhere doing the work they had been commissioned to do, to do, to evangelise in Christ's name. So we arrive at the second Sunday in Lent. Let's remind ourselves that Jesus' message was not only for his disciples and followers then, but it continues to be a message for all those who would follow him, and that definitely includes us. The Gospel is not simply a retelling of what happened at that time. It's intended to show people everywhere exactly what is involved and demanded whenever and wherever they recognise that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, the Christ. But what we also need to keep in mind, the thing that makes all this doable, is that we are not alone in this. Because Jesus asked this of us, we have his promise that we will not have to do it alone. He gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit to equip us and empower us. Be it our own suffering, our own trials, our own doubt, our own fears. There's nothing that Jesus has not seen, that he has not heard, nothing that would cause him to withdraw his love or his saving grace. Thankfully. Not all of us are called upon to face the life or death situations that confronted Abraham and his young boy. But we all do have to make choices all the time. Some big, some very small. Choices that reflect our own discipleship, that each and all together give a telling picture of our commitment to Jesus. None of us can know what lies ahead of us or what will be asked of us in the days and even the years to come. But what Jesus asks of each of us is that we follow him through those days, that we keep our eyes on the one who endured everything for us, that wherever life's path takes us, we let his love and his light be our guide. How trusting and faithful are we, I wonder? Can we do better? Well, let's try during this Lent to be the disciples that Christ calls us to be. Disciples who truly follow Jesus, even to the cross. Amen. Let's sing or listen to our second hymn, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. I the Lord of sea and sky, I 
have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you Turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Who shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I? I will tend the poor and lay, I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts are satisfied, I will give my life to them. Shall I send? Here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will. Lord, your word, which summoned this world into existence, brought order out of chaos and beauty out of the formless, has infused the very air we breathe with the precious perfume of your love. This word is the light by which our journey is illuminated, the light by which we see the beauty of this world, and the light we pass to those who would join us travelling in the joy of your company. Lord, your love extends to the boundaries of the universe, yet it's focused on humankind, weak, sinful, helpless, blown this way and that way, individuals who you count as your children, wanting nothing more than to welcome them into your arms, prodigals returning to their father. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Lord, your love breaks through, demands to be noticed, exposes that which has been hidden, 
reveals the truth that's been concealed within the heart. We pray for those who exploit the poor, those whose business is slavery or persecution, and those who hold power over life or death. We pray that your word, your love, might bring change and bring light into the hearts darkened by sin. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Lord, your love has influence wherever it is shown, a shoulder to lean on, a willing ear to listen, a task performed, a gift given, a selfless act. We pray for politicians and leaders, all those in positions of authority who also walk within your company. May they show your love and share your word through their actions and service, and may they and those they serve be blessed. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Lord, your love extends to the boundaries of humankind, to rich and poor, have and have-nots, oppressor and oppressed, thief and victim, for we are all inheritors of a fallen nature and all in need of your forgiveness. We pray for all your children wherever they might be, in their joy and sorrow, fear and loathing, pain and suffering, that your word might comfort, your love heal and restore, and bring hope for the future. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Lord, we bring before you our own concerns, and in a moment's quiet, we offer those people who are on our minds. Lord, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. I invite you to join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer as we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's sing or listen to our third hymn, Lord of the Dance. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll 
On the Friday when the sky turned black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body and they thought I'd gone But I am the dance and I still go on Dance then wherever you may be I am the lord of the dance said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance said he I'll live in you if you live in me I am the lord of the dance set he Dance then wherever you may be I am the lord of the dance set he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be I'll lead you all in the dance set he Our closing prayer. Lord, grant us simplicity of faith and a generosity of service that gives without counting cost. A life overflowing with grace poured out from the one who gave everything that we might show the power of love to a broken world and share the truth from a living word. Lord, grant us simplicity of faith and a yearning to share it. Amen. A final blessing for us all. May we walk in God's ways, always knowing what is right and good. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>